From the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, ask, and you will receive. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Whoever seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door is open. Who among you will give your children a stone when they ask for bread? Or give them a snake when they ask for a fish? If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? Therefore, you should treat people in the same way that you want people to treat you. For this is the law of the prophets. May God bless the reading of His word to our hearts. Amen. In the medieval church, primers were written as a way to help the Christian sojourner to develop their faith. One of the prayers that was found in a primer in northern England was dated 1527. It's a familiar prayer. I'm sure all of us have heard it or perhaps prayed it. So I invite you now to pray the prayer with me. Let us pray. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departure. Not long ago, I found a meditation that was written by a parish priest as a way to teach his parishioners about prayer. It was, in fact, a reaction or a reflection on the prayer that I just prayed. It was written in the form of a dialogue between the priest and God. The priest begins. Holy God, it's me again. I'm back to talk with you. I need to share the burdens of my heart. I need to speak the uncertainties of my spirit to you. I'm here to learn from you. Teach me your ways that I might be pleasing in your sight. God responds. Come unto me, my child. Even though I already know the burdens that you carry, I ask you to give voice to them. Not for my benefit, but for yours. My child, what is it today? I prayed that prayer from the ancient primer for decades, and yet after thousands of repetitions, I think I'm only now beginning to understand not at all a prayer about my eyes or my mouth or my heart. It's not even about understanding or looking or speaking. It's more than that. Teach me the significance of the prayer, O oh God. Wisdom comes slowly, my child, God said. But to the patient person, it, it eventually comes. This is a prayer that unites your senses with your actions. What don't you understand about the prayer? Well, I look back and I see so many times when I've fallen short of your best plan for me. I have a hard time having you constantly in my thinking and speaking and looking and understanding. As attentive as I try to be in prayer, I recognize the hallowness of my prayer words, especially in light of the example of Jesus. God said, 
My child, every time you pray, pray that prayer. Forgive me of my sins as I forgive those who sin against you. You are actually dealing with other people in the same way that I deal with you. I created you, I love you, I know you, I understand you, and I forgive you. The priest pondered the response from God, and he said, thank you for listening. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for teaching me. Help me, O oh God, to grow in my faith so that I can do the work that you have given me to do. And God says, go in peace, my child. Know that you always have my blessing. What a marvelous example of prayer from the saints of old. What a marvelous example from a, a prayer that was written in 1527. But you probably are saying, just as I did when I read it, but God doesn't interact with me quite like that. To which I'm going to ask you one question. Are you sure? Are you sure? Is it possible? that we have overlooked our need to tune our spiritual ears so that we can hear God speak to us? Do we need to resensitize ourselves to listen and then trust that still small voice within us that leads and guides and comforts us in our anxiety or in our confusion or in our grief? Matthew 5, 6, and 7 function as the Cliff Notes version of the New Testament. Anybody here remember the Cliff Notes? It's the way I got through lots of tests. <laughs> I believe that if the rest of the New Testament were extracted from us and we were left only with Matthew 5, 6, and 7, it would be enough for us to have the insight that we need to be a faith-filled, faithful Christian. In these brief chapters from Matthew, Jesus taught about Christian attitudes and values and ethics and behaviors. He taught about the love of God and the prayer and fasting that's encouraged for the Christian person. He taught about serving and the futility of work. And in that verse that I read a moment ago, Jesus enlarged our perspective about prayer, particularly enlarging our perspective about the Lord's Prayer. Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. In the original Greek, those simple and well-rehearsed phrases are best translated, and I want you to get this. They're best translated, ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Knock and keep knocking. I believe Jesus was trying to teach us something about the persistence of prayer. If you are puzzled about the gift that God has invested in you, as you pray and seek God, ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Knock and keep knocking. If you happen to be going through a dark time when the light of God is hidden completely by the clouds of discouragement or depression, when in prayer you cry out, I invite you to ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Knock and keep knocking. 
If you have feelings of being overwhelmed with grief, hold steady. Keep the faith. Keep praying. And continue to ask and seek and knock. You see, if we can stay persistent with prayer, eventually the clouds lift and darkness is overcome by light and new understanding emerges that we have never understood quite like that before. But friends, it's been my experience that people of the 21st century have a difficult time with practicing persistence. Some people believe that they deserve to have what they want, when they want it, and the way they want it. Some people actually believe that they have the right to tell God what the best answer to prayer is. And when we don't get what we want, then we tend to question God or we question our faith, which is neither fair to God or to us. I would imagine if we took a poll here today, most folks who are sitting here in this sanctuary would say that they believe in the power of prayer. Most of us would testify to the effect of prayer in our lives. Most of us could claim that we have had an answer to prayer. And yet we are often not persistent enough to ask and keep asking, seek and keep seeking, or knock and keep knocking. I wonder why that is. So I invite you to go back to the prayer that I prayed and pray it one more time. Let us pray. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departure. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for being with us on this All Saints Day. We trust that God has spoken to you in a particular way that brings comfort or guidance or strength or help for you. Today, I have to confess, was a first for me. I have never preached a sermon to the accompaniment of a caroline before. (laughs) Somehow that caroline didn't read the change of time. So it was a surprise to everybody. (laughs) Ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Knock and keep knocking. Because in your journey, when you commit your life to prayer, all of your life, God responds in surprising ways. May God's grace and goodness go with you today. Amen.